in many ways what this case is about is taking all the past cases and the law that has been established, the precedents oh, that have been established, wow. <laughs> and, and, and now applying it to British Airways. Right. So this is the second time now, right? Like, no, actually more than one. Like, I know for sure about the Air Canada one because uh, we, we talked last time. So how many airlines uh, have uh, succumbed to the Gabby, uh, Gabby <laughs> stick? <laughs> uh, I've, I've brought more than two dozen of successful 2000. complaints uh -huh. to, 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 about various issues about baggage. And, oh. and so, so in many ways, what this case is about is taking all the past cases and the law that has been established, the precedents oh, that have been established, wow. <laughs> and, and, and now applying it to British Airways. Right. And, so, and something you must know about this mm -hmm. is that before I went to the Canadian Transportation Agency, yep. I did approach British Airways and attempted to deal with them in amicable terms. I told mm -hmm. them, look, this is, our, this is the past precedence that the agency has on yeah. these issues. Please change your tariffs. Right. And they, they ignore were, you. They brush, they brush you. They, 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 I, I spoke to their uh, when lawyer. Was it? How, how long ago was it? I had some telephone discussions back in December 2012, November, December 2012, December. Mm -hmm. with the North American Council for British Airways. Right. And uh, he, he essentially said, no, we're not going to change it. Yeah, it's buzz not. off. Yeah, who are you? <laughs> No, he, he, he wasn't rude at all. Oh, it wasn't was, rude, so it's not like no. rude, but, uh, but the no. implicit action is like, sorry, we are not going to change. But it, essentially, he had no, no interest in really resolving this mm. matter amicably. Mm. Like many times it happens with corporations, mm. they believe that they are perfect, they cannot be wrong. Right. And if you think that they are wrong, the problem is with you. Ah, oh, I see. Right. So, um, I guess because this is uh, based on the precedents, so uh, we can go look at the precedent and kind of kind of guess what they have to do. So, which precedents uh, was this case based on? Was it the Air Canada one? The like the delay? What? Which one was it? Uh, let Let's scope the issue uh, and the, the, the this one, issue. I, I, I will. I will need to pull up. The, let me just pull up the decision. Uh, mm. Yeah. And I was looking at a copy of the decision. That's it's long like any any government decision. It said there was actions or like arguments from both sides and everyone. But thanks yeah, for it, including it, that. Yeah. It, it, it's it's quite it's quite well written actually. Mm -hmm. um, so let me see. Uh, it was based on the the cases that are being mentioned here mm -hmm. are some decisions in in uh, involving Porter Airlines that, that I had a successful complaint about a year ago. So a number of decisions against right. Air Canada. So it's uh, uh, Lucas versus Porter and decision three four four C dash A dash two zero one three, right? Three Something four. Like uh, no, uh, that was 16 C A 2013. Oh, okay, 16 right, right. Yes. Sorry, uh, the viewers out That's there, good. we are actually going very geeky and then going straight to the reference case. But hey, it was another case of yours, and Lucas versus Porter. They, <laughs> they, they, the rock. They, 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 they refer to, to, at least they cite me referring to some uh, case against mm. WestJet, this 483 C A. So, uh, it, it, in many ways, the way I would describe it is that that uh, it has taken a number of past decisions, mm -hmm. and and uh, yes, you're quite right. Also, into three four four, it is also being mentioned mm -hmm. later on. Right. And and essentially, a portion of this of this is that okay. This is what the agency ruled in those other cases. Yeah. And this principle is also should apply to British right. Airways. Right. So, the. The outcome of this case, to me, was not a surprise. Like, of course, I'm feeling vindicated yeah. and very happy about mm -hmm. it. But it was kind of unexpected that this is what, this will be the outcome. So, do you say it, unexpected too? This this was expected. Right, expected. Yeah, because of the precedents, right? I mean, yes, laying yes. out like based on CTA rules and rule previously rulings, then BA, you are yes. doing this, and then like uh, follow. <laughs> It, it the, certainly it was it was the logical thing to, mm. to, to happen. In, in terms of what the decision is about, uh, I I would 
uh, we could categorize it to maybe three e issues. One is denied boarding compensation. Mm -hmm. What happens when a flight is overbooked yeah. and the airline bumps the passenger? Right, right. Second but class of issues is baggage delay and damage. Uh -huh. like the case of that. Right. And third category is, is, is flight delay and cancellation and all those things related right, to... So bump off, baggage damage or delay, and then the last one was... Uh, uh, sorry. It, it was it was flight schedule changes. Flight schedule changes, right. Yes. So yes. if I remember, one of the the previous one that we talked about was uh, like the, the compensation was, uh, I think I even termed it uh, Gabby compensation. Like we, yeah. Canadian people are, uh, or passenger, I mean, it doesn't need to be Canadian citizen or anything. You fly off from Canada, you apply, right? So 200, was it 200, 400, and 600? 200, 400, and 800, and 800 was, right? was the system within... Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also another compensation system that was coming from another decision f for Air Canada that when Air Canada flies from Canada to the European community, uh -huh. they have to pay four hundred or eight hundred dollars depending on the length of. Oh, the Oh, because it's going out to Europe. Yes. Which is right. on top of ours or the same? Like no, it, it, kind of it, 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 it is. It is alternative you know right. if, it's not a and it's not accumulative <laughs> it's I, not like we win I, a I, I, I wish it were accumulative accumulative yeah. it, it would be a lot of fun that way right, right. Uh, cer certainly it would it would um, make it m much more um, profitable for Canadians to, <laughs> to Canadian passengers to be bumped if it were cumulative, but unfortunately it isn't. Right. Um, so in this case, what uh, obviously we cannot dictate or tell uh, for sure what BA will do, but then, uh, I mean, they are presidents, right? I mean, uh, in this case, the CTA already kind of say, hey, follow the president and uh, follow the, I mean, they, they're directing them to do something. So what do you see them uh, needing to do, I mean, if um, those cases are I, like, okay, I think that that followed. What I would like to see happen mm -hmm. is that they adopt the same regime that Air Canada adopted right. to Europe. And the reason that I would, I, I would want to see that is because that is consistent with the compensation system from Europe to Canada. So oh. wh wh when you fly from Europe to Canada, then the European regulations apply to mm. cancellation or or bumping happening at a European airport, oh. even as if into Air Canada. So, so, so again... It, it, Mm -hmm. It would make sense that if you fly from point A to point B, you would get the same composition as flying from B to A. <sighs> right. So, uh, again, on that point, uh, I guess there's a fine legal point now. I, to me, England, is UK is obviously part of Europe. But in this case, is it part of Europe? Like, should the rule actually apply? Well, in England, England is obviously part of the European Union. Yeah. Uh, so... The European denied boarding compensation rules applies to all flights departing from England to Canada. Oh, depart that way. So that yes. way actually uh, has already existing compensation yeah. mechanism. It's just that yes. the other way from Canada, they're saying no. Uh, originally, they're saying nope, but we don't want to do anything. They, they were providing far less. Comp they did provide some compensation. And the other interesting tidbit is that they, they were providing different compensation than what was in their... In their contract. Oh, really? So yes, they, they, they were actually paying more than what was in their contract. But the problem with that is that it renders it very difficult to enforce your rights if they don't like your face. They don't give give you. Oh, okay. So sometimes so, so, they pay them more, a little bit more than their contract, yeah, they, even they, though they, it's they, less than kind of what we it's rule rule now. But uh, the contract was quite outdated, so it oh. had some compensation for fifty to two hundred dollars, and British Airways was paying two hundred to four hundred dollars, right. depending on the length of the delay. But actually, their obligation under the European rules mm -hmm. would be four hundred or eight hundred dollars. That's a good approximation of of the amounts of the obligation. Right. Involved. So in a sense, uh, it's asymmetric, right? Uh, from Europe, higher actually. From uh, us, Canada, like it's even with the new rules and it's, it's still a little bit lower. If, if that, well, if well, well, right. well, with, with the new rules revised, we will see what happens. I would, it will be almost the same. Oh, okay. Uh, actually, follow up on that. With the mm -hmm. new rule, uh, is the CTA actually dictate them to go with the uh, the European rule style, or it's up to them? See, if they it's up to them, wouldn't the corporation actually still pick the cheapest way to kind of meet the requirements? What they said is that they will have to provide reasons 
they in paragraph 144 here of the decision, they provide them an opportunity to show uh, uh, which which of which of those uh, four regimes listed there they they want to apply from now on. From my perspective, they should be obviously the the, the answer is regime number three. Which is which is essentially consistent with the European regime. Uh -huh. I agree, I agree with that number two is is reasonable. That's what I propose for domestic flights. Mm -hmm. But for international flights, it's a whole different uh, uh -huh. situation. And given that Air Canada already has a has a regime in place, I think it would be grossly unfair and unreasonable mm -hmm. to ha to allow British Airways to to have a, a regime which which pays less. Than what Air Canada pays. There's there's no no reason for. Right, exactly. I mean, yeah. Since when are we going to start treating foreign airlines better than we like kind of force and demand uh, Canadian airlines? Right? I mean, at least the same, or maybe even and, and, maybe more, because after all, foreign airlines. I, I, right? I, I think that that I'm very strong supporter of the open sky notion. I think that that all airlines regardless of their nationality should be allowed to fly into Canada and even within Canada if they w wish to uh, provided they meet the regulatory and security requirements of Canada mm -hmm. so I, I think that in terms of increasing competition Canadians would have a very significant interest in having as many airlines yeah. whether Canadian or foreign and it mm -hmm. doesn't matter mm -hmm. so I would not agree that we should treat foreign airlines worse than 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 mm, other okay, Canadian. I, yeah. I, I think that what is yes, uh, what would be important though is to have some kind of legislation, mm -hmm. which unfortunately the Conservative government blocked twice, to have some kind of legislation in place which would create a complete mm -hmm. even. Play, playing field for all airlines. This is the compensation you have to provide. This is the rules you have to comply with, and uh, and 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 that way, this whole some issues, in my view, should not be part of a tariff per se, but should be just a matter of a statute that requires a particular payment, and that that would also relieve the the pressure of if you look at those tariffs. Mm -hmm. They are extremely lengthy and complicated legal documents. Some of those things should be encoded, codified by way of some kind of air passenger rights bill. Right. right. So if I'm going to ask you in the next 30 seconds or 45 seconds to kind of summarize, so what is the new thing that you think that uh, um, it's going to be gained by this decision? Can you uh, list them out? And uh, obviously there are different options. Uh, um, BA can take, but uh, uh, yeah, can you list out like the, po the potential financial uh, implications for for this decision in terms of benefiting? How is it benefiting Canadian uh, travelers? It doesn't need to be Canadians, but as long as they are flying off from Canada to somewhere, I mean, in this case to England or wherever BA flies, can you briefly summarize it? For sure, I think the most important aspect of this decision is a significant improvement of the night boarding compensation, mm -hmm. which is going to increase the amount paid out to passengers probably by a factor of two. Mm. Which is how much um, so that people get a rough concrete so, number? So, so what I'm hoping that by the end of the day will happen here mm. is that passengers will receive $400 or $800 depending on the length of the delay caused by the bumping. Right, and the length of the delay for 400 and then versus 800 hours? It, it would be four hours. If the delay caused is, is up to four hours, then it would be $400. Okay. If it is more than four hours, it would, it would be $800. Right, and w uh, when will um, BA have to decide, uh, has to dis decide, make this decision by? And uh, yeah. British Airways has until February 17th to respond to this decision okay. and uh, tell the Canadian Transportation Agency what is its proposal right. and uh, then I will be asking to make further submissions unless, unless they agree with option three which is what I think they should be mm -hmm. doing just what Air Canada does between oh, Canada okay. and Europe. So, so it's not like February 17th or whenever it's going to like oh suddenly oh we're going to start uh, getting money uh, if they delay us. They. I guess chances are they may actually still fight it and then it may drag on a little bit or there may be some discussions going back and forth about price, uh, money or whatever. I expect that 
uh, after February, there will be still a few months mm -hmm. where uh, of of, the, of litigation discussion, and then the agency is going to issue a decision saying this is what you need to do. I expect, I'm hoping that this matter will will be cleared up before the summer. Right. But what what is good about this decision is that it really shows a positive direction yeah. and it creates further precedent. Right. It's a warning for all other airlines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That they that should either do it, change it now, or like Gabby is going to come talk to them. <laughs> yes. Them. <laughs> it it will it will be talking with a with being served with a complaint, basically. Right. Oh, big start. Right. So I don't want to uh, leak your legal strategy to the receiving end, but can we, like, can you highlight what next? Uh, once we, I'm sure, like, uh, you're not going to start something new uh, when the BA is going on. I don't know. But uh, let's say when the BA is done, uh, would you be, like, a, a search of, like, okay, now, like, f let's follow the ducks uh, <laughs> go that way now. <laughs> we've got Care Canada. We've got... Uh, BA and well, let's uh, West let's Jet. Comply. Uh, there's West also Jet. there's also a complaint against Porter, which is before the agency. Mm -hmm. I'm expecting there also a decision mm -hmm. fairly shortly. It also deals with denied boarding compensation of right. international flights. Right. Uh, so that that's that's the next uh, thing that I would like to finish. Mm -hmm. But now, once given that this British Airways case is over, mm -hmm. I would like to uh, to file also a complaint against Pascan Airlines. It's a new Pascan? airline. Oh. Yes, it's a, it's a new airline from uh, Quebec, oh. and uh, I've contacted them in October, telling them that they need to improve their tariffs, mm -hmm. and they have not gotten back to me up until now. Okay. So what I'm going to do in the next short while. Mm -hmm. A while is I'm going to again review what their tariffs look like, mm -hmm. whether whether uh, there's any improvement there, right. and and then I'm going to file a complaint. Probably the complaint is not going to be comprehensive, mm -hmm. in the sense that I'm going to pick some of the most important, most uh, most uh, significant issues, mm -hmm. and focus on them first, such as baggage liability mm -hmm. and uh, then from there I w I'm going to go on to perhaps further complaints against Pascan. Uh, often, often it's better to, to have narrow issues mm -hmm. for each complaint and then w and, and come back with another complaint to refine things. Wow, okay, so very specific narrow complaint so that they have to address and then and then another one later on very specific again so that each one, they have no no wiggle room. <laughs> like, comply, precedence. That, that, that's one side of it. Mm. The other side is that by having more narrow complaints, it helps you in not having too much submissions. Oh, because okay. you just, just think of the poor people at the agency. Mm. If you have 100 pages of submissions, mm. it makes it very difficult for them right. to... Okay, I see. So you, go, you start with the very important one and I guess the biggest financial impact one and the most yes, yes. one and then yes. yeah, go from there. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So I guess uh, let me go a little bit more abstract now. So I previously interviewed you and know you actually have kept a website and with some uh, like sample documents or templates or previous reports and what. So from that, you're trying to kind of educate. Uh, I'll let you explain why do you put up those template documents or the previous complaint or like it's kind of like a research, extensive research and extensive things. Uh, tell me uh, first name the website and then yeah why it it, it is docs dot air dot ca. You will find their information about cases that I'm involved in or other cases that, that I think they are very important for the system, for the knowledge for of, of the of passengers, and of course legal experts who are involved in air passenger rights, lawyers, mm -hmm. foreign and Canadian. Mm -hmm. The purpose is also to to educate people what a complaint looks like. There are some, I know some people go there, mm -hmm. copy out some information, use it as a template mm -hmm. and, uh, and then use it for preparing their own submissions. Right. 
in some cases and it's, it's also helpful so to, you feel so good from that i mean i i don't think they pay you for getting that but yeah it's like you want them to share it <laughs> it, you want, it, it you want them to use it is that right the purpose is to help others the purpose is that i have worked out those arguments in in, in a and, and quite often when i'm preparing a complaint i'm copy pasting from a previous complaint about <laughs> <laughs> about some of the principles because the principles don't change it's right. just you keep applying the same principles to, mm -hmm. to the to the facts right. and uh, that's that's one aspect uh, and and the other is also to ensure that people understand what proceedings before the Canadian Transportation Agency look like mm -hmm. because you see some people go ahead and file a complaint with the agency without knowing what it really involves they think that they just provide a complaint and tell all their problems uh -huh. and then the agency is going to somehow investigate for, on their behalf uh -huh. and pursue it on their behalf and that could not be farther from the truth. Uh -huh. The agencies, when it investigates complaints in the sense of an adjudicates complaints, is the right. better way of putting it, uh -huh. the adjudicative process is one which is an adversarial one. So uh -huh. the agency does not investigate but rather lets the parties present their arguments, right. present yeah. Arguments from you and arguments from the airline, or yeah, exactly. back and forth, back and and forth, and, right. and and then eventually they they rule on things, mm -hmm. and and this is really something that is missing in Canada. Mm -hmm. There is no body that 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 would think of think of competition sphere. You have the competition tribunal and the yeah. competition commission commission. Bureau, right? yeah, competition bureau, yes. Right. So so you have there two bodies. You have one body which investigates, gathers evidence. You have another body which adjudicates. Mm. That is something that is very, very badly missing in, in transportation matters. Oh, okay, I see. You have you only adjudicative body. There's no body was was tasked to do the investigate, like anti-competitive behavior and whatnot. Nothing yes, like was was tasked is to mm. investigate uh, when when airlines misbehave. More precisely, the agent it would be also the agency that is supposed to do that in some cases, but somehow it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So. The, the, the agency is quite good when we have this kind of policy complaints, what I do. But when it comes down to complaints of individual passengers, mm. I, I find that the agency is quite hostile to those oh, passengers. I see. Mm -hmm. And for example, in a recent decision, mm -hmm. the agency wrote that passengers have to do more than present facts. Oh, really? <laughs> more than present facts like what? <laughs> I, what do I don't mean? know. <laughs> I want to know that too, mm -hmm. but what I have been seeing in the decisions re relating to individual complaints as opposed to policy complaints mm -hmm. is that the agency presumes that the passenger is wrong, the passenger is guilty, oh. and that assumption is kept until the passenger proves otherwise. Oh. And with airlines, the unfortunate reality that you will see on individual complaints is that they will not hesitate to file false affidavits. They will not hesitate to, to file so some... So who filed false, false affidavits? The airlines. Oh, the airline. Oh, really? They just make, make stuff up. No, no, we didn't. This happened. That, that didn't happen. Exactly. In, in, oh. in one case, mm. that is now the passenger is asking the federal court to hear, like, hear his case. Wow. The, if you look at the affidavit the airline filed and compare it with the records, uh, then, then it turns out that what the airline agent is swearing as true in the affidavit mm -hmm. could possibly be true only if you can board a big jumbo jet in five minutes. Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> well, that kind of... Uh... <laughs> Mm -hmm. Imaginative, uh, re yeah, facts. <laughs> it's kind of rich, I would say. It is, and yeah. and, uh, and the the problem is that the, even though the passenger's lawyer mm -hmm. pointed this out, the Canadian Transportation Agency did not analyze the evidence. Did not say oh. no. We don't. We don't think this is relevant, right. or we don't. We don't think it's a good argument. Right. Well, so they just take it as well, okay. Well, they said so. Must be right. Sworn of a David must be correct. So they didn't it, actually think. I like, use their head, or may I say, to actually look and see physically, even in an emergency situation or the other way. I mean, can you do that if physically? It, it, exactly. Mm -hmm. They they don't they don't go into the question of whether when there is a sworn affidavit, can 
what is in there be true at all. Right. I'm not talking about question of credibility for which you may need to observe a witness. I'm talking about is what is stated in, in the document mm -hmm. physically possible. Mm -hmm. I see. Wow, that was quite something. I mean, the new, yeah. <laughs> right. So that. It's kind of the airline side of things, right? So this time, I think I want to go about one level about that. So in general, complain not just with uh, um, airline stuff. Like you must, I want you to share your perspective on how to improve. I think you want to improve customer service or uh, improve how people are treated by the various industry. So if people in an other industry or in another place that are as courageous and and kind of like be willing to take up such a role, like what is the the thinking or what what kind of things that you would recommend or suggest to people? I mean, if and the most important message is that don't take whatever a large corporation tells you mm. granted for granted. Mm. Those corporations have their own policies, but these policies are not the laws of the land. I see. Yeah. When you speak to those agents, salespeople, mm. managers working for large corporations, they are going to present to you the corporate policy as if it were the supreme law of the oh, land. Right. Mm. And they are going to tell you it is not our policy to give you a refund, for example. Mm -hmm. But just because it's not their policy, it doesn't mean that you are not entitled to a refund. Right, right. The real question is how much effort and money it will cost you mm -hmm. to actually enforce your rights. Mm -hmm. So at the individual level, I would say take those large corporations to small claims court and don't be scared when they bring in a big shot lawyer mm -hmm. Because even if you lose as an individual, it is going to cost them much more than for you to attend a small claims court. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what is more important, that it is going to create a public record. Mm -hmm. So even if you lose, there will be a public record uh -huh. that this is what they did, mm -hmm. this is what you said. Mm -hmm. And then you can come back, somebody else can come back to it and say, look, this company has been doing this for to other people. I see. Right. So there'll be a record, a tr a track record, uh, a documentary trace. Like they have done this, this over here uh, in fact, across Canada or something like that. That's then right. Someday someone is going to, I guess maybe have your kind of energy. It's, it's tough to compare to you, but someday someone may actually linked everything up and then get a good case and then that exactly. may be an precedence for exactly. other people to have right right so i have to go back to you like gabby you still are full-time mathematician right and this is you doing and maybe maybe full-time at the same time on the side <laughs> i think last time if i remember right you kind of like this is your way of relaxing <laughs> and, and dealing with it. Is it right? I mean, did i misunderstood like uh, yeah, no, I think remember. It's quite, quite correct mm -hmm. just last week i was uh, at the joint mathematics meeting in Baltimore, and right. uh, I gave their talk. I was invited mm -hmm. to give a 50-minute talk uh, right. for for the se session there. Right. What did so, you talk about? Just in case, I mean, I'm a math, I'm a on, very geek, so on throw the to topic out and see. Topological algebras and Bornologies. All right. Okay. All right. I, I'm completely lost, <laughs> but I know. See, so you a full-time mathematician. You gave the talk and whatnot. And then, sorry, go go on. And and then on 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 my way back from Baltimore, who, on the Philadelphia Halifax segment, we had to turn back and have an emergency landing because uh, uh, there was some some engine problems. Oh, engine problem. Mm, yeah. Yeah, and and then in in Toronto, I wanted I would was helping a passenger mm -hmm. and US Airways didn't have their its agent, mm -hmm. uh, its baggage agent. So I wanted to document what was going on there and wow. took some photographs mm -hmm. and some people there from the from from some baggage agents got very upset and demanded that I delete the picture, which I refused to do because the airport is a public space and I right. can take photographs wherever I want and right. it's none of their business. So they tried to get me arrested for it. Uh -huh. 
And <laughs> the, the, fortunately, the custom and border agency people were very well trained. Mm -hmm. They knew that this was a civil matter between two private individuals. It had nothing to do with criminal activity. Right. It had nothing to do with with customs mm -hmm. or or smuggling. Right. So they asked me what was going on and then saluted and <laughs> let me go. Oh, really? <laughs> That's yeah, good. Absolutely. absolutely. That's cool. Wow. Yeah. They, have, they, have, they have acted, they, the, the officers involved acted with utmost professionalism and integrity. Mm -hmm. and it, yeah. was, it is sad in a way that the law enforcement officers are needed and their common sense is needed to protect passengers from abuse mm -hmm. of the airline. It was really an example of a power trip. Yeah, that is, yeah, they they think they're an agent and they can like power trip you and uh, exactly yeah, people and, and 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 he he was he quickly discovered that it was not the case, but I think that some other people would have gotten really really scared and would yeah, have being intimidated been, right by exact, the situation right and yeah. and and I think that that's part of the overall scheme of things that we see mm -hmm. that airlines do try to intimidate people mm -hmm. and I do know of people who also face this kind of threat of arrest and, and uh, intimidation. Yeah. And uh, certainly, given that airlines do have a legitimate concern about the security and safety of flight after September 11th, we all understand that it is an important concern. Airlines can very, very easily abuse that. Yeah.